Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hello to some who come to work off my channel. If you've been with us throughout the beginning of the channel, you know that there is the word of the week um, feature. And this time around, I decided that I'm going to change it a little bit and tell you about my German learning journey, how it's been for me learning German in Germany and the tips that I could give you on your way. So if you are new in Germany and you're about to learn the language, don't go anywhere, stay here. So I came to Germany as basically an adolescent. I was 12 years and I realized in the beginning when I came to Germany, I didn't want to have anything to do with the language. I didn't want to learn the language. I didn't want to stay here because it was different. It was, for me, it, it, it felt dull compared to where I was coming from, from the lively um, environment in Ghana where I knew everybody where things were just different, okay? So that was one thing that made living in Germany hard for me. The people were different. The kids at school were different. And that had a great impact on my readiness to learn the language. So because I was young and I was forced to go to school, I, I kind of was thrown into the language, basically. And when I would come home, my dad had already been here for a lot of years and he was pretty good in German. So he would um, learn with us till sometimes even till 1 a.m. in the night. He would try to give us the basics, the grammar structure and things that you shouldn't say, things that could confuse you, you know, things that are peculiar in the German language. He would try to highlight all of that and make the German learning um, process easier for us. So that was one thing. The language was forced on me. It was forced on me. I didn't have a choice but to learn it. But because even while I was being forced to learn the language, I hadn't opened up myself to learning the language, it was still difficult because the the inner readiness wasn't there. So by six months, I had um, passed the Vorbereitungsklasse and I had, that was the preparation, preparation class. And after the preparation class, I went to the Hauptschule for about three months. And then after the three months, they decided that Realschule was going to be um, too easy for me, so I should go to gymnasium. That was when the readiness started kicking in. And when I started realizing that, okay, I need to perform. I need to, if I want to be in gymnasium, I want to stay in gymnasium. I need to make sure my language was top notch. So in my case, I didn't do a 1, a 2, b 1, b 2, no. I was just thrown into it because I was a child, right? Now, let's talk about the readiness. So I'm now in gymnasium. I'm interacting with um, children my age. I'm interacting with teachers and all of that. And mind you, I understand the basic things, but when it comes to the technical aspect of the subject that we are dealing with, I'm not understanding it. So when it came to German literature, I struggled. I struggled a lot because up until that time, I was also holding on to the English language so I wouldn't forget anything because I had seen that some of my cousins who had um, traveled before me, maybe a year before me to Italy or other countries that weren't speaking English, that their English most of the time was awful, that they had totally treated English for be it Italian or whatever language that they were supposed to learn where they were. So English was a language that I loved and I had no one to give up. One thing that helped was that after the first year, I was then introduced to a language that I could learn. Um, so we're supposed to start learning different languages. So people took French and I took ancient Latin. That was one of the best decisions I did for myself because ancient Latin forced me to, to really delve into the German language grammar system, grammar, grammar system. So ancient Latin also has the cases, just like German. Um, it also has all the tenses or even more than the German language has today. German language used to have it, but now it doesn't have all of those anymore and some of them as the cases where Latin had ablative and German didn't have ablative anymore but it kind of started making sense to me why I had to you know learn that so that helped a lot for me to um, practice my grammar structure and that actually is what made me know that hey I'm good with languages and it has helped me today in my career as well with translations because 
the ancient Latin was just translating things from ancient Latin to German. So that helped me to get off a bit from the English track. And of course, there was we we're doing English in school, so I wasn't always um, lost. I didn't lose English completely. Obviously, now I'm speaking English, but it was a conscious decision. It was a conscious decision. So I basically learned two languages at the same time. And every day I'm going to school, I had my Pons dictionary. It was like a small size, like pocket size dictionary that I'll have with me all the time, right? So I didn't go without my dictionary. Um, it was basically on the table. Whenever I'm packing out my stationery, everything, my pawns would also come out. That was my companion, simple. One thing that I realized was that if I want to learn la the language, I have to speak like them. I had to um, override my English or my my English accent, my African accent, and speak like the German kids were speaking in school. Because, for example, sometimes I'll say dry, like now I say dry, but sometimes when I want to say three, I'll say dry. And they'll be like, <laughs> she's saying dry. <laughs> but that helped me, those teasings helped me to focus on having the right pronunciations. That is one thing that you have to watch out for. If you're learning, Make sure that you're learning the right way at once. You know, don't learn the wrong grammar. Don't learn the, the wrong pronunciations. Because in as much as you're trying to learn the language, try as much as possible to get that pronunciations and accentuations right. That was one thing that I tried to do. And today it has helped me a lot. And learn as a child. The other kids, they would laugh and they would correct you. But even today as an adult, I still make some mistakes. And people around me know that I'm ready and open to, to corrections, so that's one thing. So, I'm, I'm a perfectionist in many things that I do. I'm not a perfectionist in all areas, but in certain things like my speech, I'm, a, I'm just very, I'm quite hard on myself. So, that is one thing that helped me with the German language, but don't be too hard, else you will not talk. So, one thing that helped me was speaking. Speak, speak, speak. I'm still working on that. I realized that once I was in a German setting where the German speech was the order of the day or the language of the day, I wouldn't speak much because it took me a long while to be able to say what I wanted to say for my counterpart to understand what I actually wanted to say without under misunderstanding me. So I'd rather just be quiet and listen. And sometimes me listening or me being quiet was not me being arrogant, but it was just me trying to absorb all the special slangs that were being spoken around me. So one other thing that I would say is keep your ears open, stay alert, stay alert to how things are said, stay alert to the kind of idioms that are spoken around you, are said around you. And one thing is don't be too hard on yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. The truth of the matter is you will make mistakes. Okay. It is just part of it. You will make mistakes. You will make mistakes. You will make mistakes. Allow it. Laugh over them and try to keep them in your head and to be open to criticism. So if somebody is telling you how it's supposed to be said, trust me, just accept it and try to um, integrate that into your speech, into your writing. How my German got better with time was I did a lot of reading. That helped me because I'm somebody who loves reading. Reading is one of my hobbies. And I read from in my leisure and I read also for work. And I try as much as possible to read even today like I try to read a novel, maybe it can take me months to finish, at least I've read a page or two and I try to pick out something new. I've realized that I'm not able to read all the time, so I listen to audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks and one thing the audiobook does for you is that after some time you've read a lot and sometimes you don't even know how those words are pronounced, right? So you don't know where the accentuation is. And when you listen to the audiobook, you would hear the word and be like, ah. I know it from somewhere. You will realize how it's being pronounced, you realize how it's being used, and sometimes because of the context that the word is pronounced or is set in, in the story or whatever, you realize, you have an idea of what it's supposed to mean. So consciously build vocabulary, and that can only be done through reading. So if you're in a setting whereby your native tongue is being spoken all around you in Germany, 
try as much as possible to listen to German radio. That's where you hear the slangs and all of that. So when somebody says something to you on the street, you know what to say or what is meant by that. You watch TV, watch news in German, and then watch it again in your language so you know what is going on if you're not too sure. And if, thank God these days they have the media take. So you can watch everything with subtitles. You can watch the news with subtitles. Just activate that. And I, I normally watch it on the first channel, so ILD. And I use subtitles sometimes. Yes, I'm to today. I still use subtitles because I want to. Sometimes the, the interviews go too fast. And I want to be able to understand what they said exactly, and I want to read along. So sometimes I do, I do that. I I watch news with subtitles, and it helps me. It helps me feel, yes, I'm doing something for my German. I allocate time to maybe just 15 minutes a day to listen to something German, to read something German, to speak German. Do that today. The apps that have helped me are still helping me. My number one is Lingue, Lingue app. Um, back then, I also used to use OWAD, one word a day. Now, one word a day is actually for getting an English word each day. But what they do is that they explain the etymology of the English word and then they tell you the German meaning. And sometimes as a bonus, you get to know what, what is the difference between the German meaning and the English meaning and um, the antonyms and, you know, the words that are similar but actually have different meanings that ha are in, in relation to the words that are similar but have different meanings but are in relation to your particular word of the day so OWAD is great sign up for one word a day if you can and download the Lingue app on your phone Ponce as well and Duden. Duden is your friend if you're not sure of how things are spelled the grammar set up yeah try Duden as well so today I'm going to give you true friends that are words that are similar in English and in German that are going to make your German learning process easy and to encourage you to just be ready, just open yourself, have that readiness to learn and that is the main part. Once I was ready to learn, I was ready to perform, things came easier to me and it's a learning process. Let's start with the true friends. Number one, blind, 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 blind. Easy, right? So. Ein finger, one finger. Zwei finger, two fingers. Finger, same. In fact, let's go to the next one. Hand, hand. Die hand, the hand. Die hand, the hand. Easy. So, der hunger, hunger. Der hunger, hunger. Plus, plus. Plus, plus. And we use it the same way. Eins plus eins is zwei. One plus one is two. And this is for you if you're new, so how to pronounce the W in German. Wild, 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 wild. Warm, another one is warm, 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 warm. So guys, these are a few words for you to know that it is doable. And one thing I forgot to say is that try as much as possible to think in German. In German, what you see is what you get. The pronunciation rules are always the same and once you learn those basic rules you just apply to the rest of the words unless it's a foreign word but in German you usually things stay as they are unlike in English so illusion is illusion illusion is illusion so guys you've come to the end of today's video thank you so much for sticking with me if you have not yet subscribed you should because on Sunday I'm coming to you with a great topic and next Wednesday I'm meeting you with a new topic on life in Germany as well. Our upload days are Sundays and Wednesdays. So yes, activate your bell button, like, comment, and share. Let everybody know this channel is active and we are putting out great content. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Vielen Dank, dass ihr heute dabei wart. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Bleibt gesund, haltet Abstand, Maske auf. Wear your mask, keep your distance, stay healthy, stay safe. See you next time. Bye. Tschüss.